great to be part of the Fight Camp series as it comes to a close and a pleasure to be alongside Andy Lee and Andy for Mikey McKinson. This is a chance to give his career a massive boost. Yeah, raise his profile, showcase his skills, and put his name amongst the mix in the World Heavyweight Division. So the sky is dark and over the Fight Camp ringside area, a cool breeze drifting in. The perfect setting for Mikey McKinson to follow up on that impressive win against Chris Congo earlier in the year in Gibraltar. And he starts on the front foot. The man who calls himself the problem, he's floored his last three opponents in the opening round, but they've all got up to last the full 10 round distance. But another bright start from McKinson, flicking out that right hand jab, which was such an important shot against Congo. And that shot win, certainly according to some, he was the underdog going in and pulled off that win against Chris Congo. Decisively, according to some, close on a couple of the judges' scorecards. Sharp shooting from McKinson, finding his timing, his rhythm already in the early stage of this opening round with just a minute to go. And again, he lands that left hand and he's been dismissed in the past as a non-puncher and indeed has only stopped two of his 20 opponents in that unblemished record. But he says, they all say I can't punch until they get in the ring with me. So McKinson looking to build on that impressive first round and getting on the front foot right at the beginning of the second round, flicking out that right hand jab. And that's been the key to so many of his successes, dominating from the center of the ring. And as Andy said, looking to make a real impression here. I'm really biting down on the gun shield, trying to get some power into these shots. And he's fainting effectively, McKinson, too. So when he's not touching his face, good left hand. McKinson lands balance. a solid left hand and goes after Runowski. Runowski was off balance as well as being clipped, but a good shot from McKinson. And again, a reminder that there is a bit of sting behind those punches. And as he moves up in levels, he will have to gain the respect of opponents with those shots. And another clipping right hook from McKinson. Solid work here over the course of the first five minutes of the contest. This is a very bright start for a man intent on making a statement here. And so far, he's been doing just that. Good counter. Left hook over for McKinson. And now Ronowski's coming to have a little go. But I just think he hasn't come to terms with the southpaw style, this awkward style of McKinson. And McKinson reading what Ronowski's doing and enjoying the chance to open up and exploit the gaps that are left behind that sometimes high held guard. And McKinson again trying to land that left hand, gets through, but not with the real venom of some of the shots that landed earlier on. And there's a, a kind of a a cuffing feel to some of these left hands from McKinson rather than really driving it through from the canvas. And so Ronofsky is able to take those shots, but then he proved himself so resilient against Josh Kelly. Could never be accused of looking for the trap door, looking for a way out, and he was hit hard and often by Kelly and hurt. Back hole with his chin up there. And there was a pause from the Poles' corner there when that left hand landed solidly from Yunoski, but McKinson has taken it well and got back on the front foot, immediately giving the pole a sense of demoralization here because he landed one of the better shots of the contest as far as he's concerned, but McKinson just took it. No change in his expression and got straight back on the front foot. <laughs> The face of Runowski showing the rigors of battle, getting more reddened by the round as he swings it with the right hand to the body. McKinson just for a moment turns to the orthodox stance. McKinson is really beginning to fancy this now, and there must just be a chance for Runowski to have something solid, but it's a great left hand again from McKinson at the end of the round. And See here, good, and it's just a variety. Another put, and then he stills in the toe and throws a straight left. But, uh, to be honest with you, I'm quite disappointed in Ronowski. He talked about having a great camp before this fight, unlike the Kelly fight, and that he was going to come and really bring it, but he's been, he hasn't been able to really. He's not been allowed to.
by McKinson, who's keeping him in his shell, keeping him in his box. And it's just the, the variety and the awkwardness of McKinson. He just has no way of figuring it out. Yeah, for all the variety of McKinson, Ronofsky has looked one-dimensional. Coming forward in straight lines with coffee book shots, straight left hand, straight right hand to the body, occasionally having success as he did there with a right hand to the body, but it's been all McKinson as the scorecard of Tony Bellew attests. Standing in the orthodox stance now, McKinson. He is a right-handed southpaw. Leads generally with his stronger hand. Not unusual in the southpaw community, but they are in the minority. Flicking out that right hand now, that stronger hand as a jab. But this is much better from him. I don't think he's winning the exchange, but at least he's trying. He's trying. And all the time being dissuaded because he's being made to miss as he was there. And quite often, when he's being made to miss, he's then being made to suffer for it as well. Ronofsky bouncing up on his toes, trying to get some kind of momentum into his work. But it's McKinson who's landing the shots still, timing the shots much better. Tries that swing left to Dzhanovsky. Landed a couple of times earlier in the fight, missing with the right He's got to hand. keep the chin down, McKinson. Uh, McKinson, sorry. He's got to keep the chin down. He is rolling the dice a little bit, McKinson, in order to get a stoppage here. I can see he's slipping, slipping to his left to come back with a left uppercut. And then, just like that. But in doing so, he's leaving himself exposed for a left hook from Ronowski. This is good from McKinson here. Standing, decided to stand and trade a little bit. McKinson again pumping in that left hand, but not really, as I said earlier, driving it through. He's scoring with it, but maybe it could have more effect. He just puts the left hand up to guard against that right hand from Runoski at that stage. This is good clinical work from McKinson. And even if he doesn't, Mike, it's still an impressive, an impressive display here. His next name is a problem. I think he could be a problem for anybody in this weight division domestically. I think we should. On the evidence of what we saw previously from Monowski, we think we should credit McKinson for this. You know, he's he's kept him in his box with punches and with feints. Anytime he's thrown a shot, he's been made to fall short and usually gets countered. And, that, and that, that's made him reluctant to open it. Tried to counter with the right hand there. So McKinson's still got to be switched on. So potentially two rounds to go then for Mikey McKinson to ram home his advantage here and a cheeky jab from Runofsky getting through another one of those rare successes but immediately McKinson replies with two solid right hand jabs of his own. Now, Runofsky has tried to exploit that gap with the right hand over the top and has had only sparing success occasionally to the body. Good left hand from McKinson that time. Good left hand and then, in fairness to Runofsky, he responded immediately with a right hand of his own. The jab's been very impressive and I like the consistency with the jab from McKinson. He's jabbing inside the gloves, Runofsky, and then when Runofsky jabs, he jabs over Runofsky's jab. So there's good variety in it. He calls himself the problem and the problem is based around that solid right hand jab. So a dominant performance from Mikey McKinson and time now to close it out with a polished last round to build on the successes of earlier on. 
and to take advantage of the wariness of his opponent, but also of the fatigue which has been induced by his inability to land anything solid, by his quest to land something of meaningful effect, but also the sheer volume of punches that McKinson has been landing throughout the contest, driven behind the effectiveness of the right-hand jab. Renasi's coming to have a go on the last round, but probably too little too late. And McKinson likes it this way. He's beginning to tee off. He's timing Runowski as the pole makes his way in and countering him with superb shots. Nice right hand from Runowski, but too little too late at this stage. And McKinson now inside the last minute of an impressive performance. He's been on top throughout here. And Runowski tries to land a left hook that walks on to another one of those left hands from McKinson. That was when McKinson, what we saw earlier on the round, where he dipped down to his left, tried to come back with the uppercut, his left uppercut, but also left himself exposed to a, to a left hook from Ronowski. And he did that occasionally on the way in against Chris Congo, leaving his chin in the air. And could be a problem as he moves up in levels, but here tonight he's been far too good for Brunowski. But Brunowski has been buoyed by that rare success and tries to get back on the front foot inside the last 20 seconds or so now of the 10 rounds. Mikey McKinson then on his way to his 21st straight victory. Only two of them inside the distance, but he's been so dominant here right from the first bell and making Brunowski miss right the way through until the end. And McKinson is delighted with that performance. And on this showcase evening for him, on this platform, he has produced a shutout against the pole who was, from the outset, second best. Ladies and gentlemen, after 10 rounds of boxing here at Matchroom HQ, we go to the judges' scorecards. Michael Alexander and Marco Morales both scored about 99 to 91. Jose Martinez and Tunes scored about 98 to 92. All three for your winner by unanimous decision. He's still undefeated and still the WBO Global Welterweight Champion, Mikey, the problem, McKinson.